What can social protection do for persons with disabilities in the current global crisis? Persons with disabilities comprise 15% of the world's population. Even before COVID-19 crisis, they were more likely to be poor and unemployed, to face catastrophic health expenses, to have lower levels of education, and their households were more exposed to economic shocks. Those inequalities arise from many barriers faced at all ages. Inaccessible infrastructures, services, transport and information, as well as stigma. To overcome those barriers, persons with disabilities have to spend more than others, and that increases their vulnerabilities. However, in most countries, they receive little support from social protection systems. The COVID-19 crisis magnifies those obstacles and vulnerabilities. Many are at greater risks because of underlying health conditions and or old age and require strict confinement, which can disrupt their usual support system. Many, especially children with disabilities and adults with high support requirements, might be in a difficult situation because their main support person can get contaminated. Persons relying on paid support or residential settings may experience failure of service providers. Additionally, persons with disabilities are more likely to lose their jobs and not find another one later. Social protection is needed now more than ever. So what can the countries do to ensure that persons with disabilities receive the support they require? In general, it is important to ensure that all public information related to the crisis and response measures is accessible for all persons with disabilities. For example, TV information should include sign language interpretation. Electronic communication should be accessible to visually impaired persons. It is critical to carry out needs assessments and extend registration of persons with disabilities, including through online methods. In order to ensure maximum outreach, it is important to coordinate with organizations of persons with disabilities, parents' organizations, and service providers. With regards to cash transfer, response measures can include ensuring adequate paid leave, sickness benefits, and cover healthcare-related expenses, increasing the amount of disability benefits or providing extra payments, extending cash transfers to persons with disabilities who are officially registered but were not previously eligible, providing top-up to recipients of other social assistance schemes such as old age pension, child grant, poverty assistance, etc. to cover disability extra costs. When it comes to support services, measures can include providing financial assistance for persons who stop working to support and or to prevent contamination of their family members with disabilities, supporting service providers to ensure access to required care and support, creating helplines and developing support platforms that can help match persons with disabilities requiring support to those who can provide it. And finally, ensuring that economic recovery programs are inclusive of persons with disabilities and their families. The COVID-19 crisis demonstrates the importance for all countries to develop inclusive and well-resourced social protection systems. Today, countries which have Disability Registry, Universal Disability Allowance and Support Services are in a better position to provide fast relief to children, working-age adults and older persons with disabilities. In summary, all countries have to do their best to provide accessible information, coordination with organizations of persons with disabilities to ensure maximum outreach, extension of community support services, cash and in-kind assistance, and inclusive economic recovery.